Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello, everyone. This is Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Remember, you can reach me anytime at 559-656-0317 or send any questions to questions at insurancehour.com. We are now proudly syndicated all across California, reaching over 30 million people, or like it sounds better to say 60 million ears, right? It's about 75% of the population in California. So we are thrilled to be able to be there and helping you. Today, we have a very special guest from the Department of Insurance. We have Michael Soller. Uh, quick bio on him, and then I want to jump right in because we've got so much to cover. Uh, Michael was appointed by Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara as Deputy Commissioner of the Communications and Press Relations Branch in 2019. That's a long business card. He previously served as Communication Director to Commissioner Lara when he was in the California Senate and has been Director of Communications for the Democratic Party of Los Angeles and even an editor for the LA Times. He has a Bachelor of Arts in History from Berkeley and a Master's Degree in History from UCLA. So like we were saying, he's got, he's got creds from Northern and Southern California. Michael, welcome. Carl, good to see you. You, you and I have been on a, on a lot of news stories together, but never really had a chance to talk face to face. So I appreciate this. Does this count as face to face anymore? I think I guess it does, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna call it face, side by side, face to face. I, I get an email now and then, and someone will say it's nice to e meet you, and I'm thinking, is that a thing now? E meet? Yeah. Okay. No. No. no I'm not gonna go there. All right. Well, listen. I am thrilled to have you here, and we do have a ton of stuff to cover, so let's let's dive right in. The first thing I thought would be a good idea is, can you, in your own words, describe to us, tell us, when you hear about the Department of Insurance, what is sort of the mantra? What is the mission statement? What is it that consumers should be expecting from the department? I mean, Carl, that's a great question, because you, you mentioned 30 million, you know, people who, you know, you go out to, right, 60 million years. I think many of them don't kind of have an appreciation, don't maybe even know that there's a Department of Insurance that's out there watching over our insurance market, you know, really watching out for consumers. Um, so, you know, really, if you, if you, if you, you know, when we look at our role, you know, when we think about the, the property insurance market in California, it is the biggest insurance market in the country. It really makes us the fourth largest in the world. Um, and we have 8.7 million residential policies you know, in, in our market. And, and, that, and, you know, we do the same thing you do with, you know, 8.7 million policies. That's millions and millions of people, right? That's families. So what, what we are, if you're really trying to do when we talk about insurance uh, and the property insurance is make it as available as possible and keep rates as low as possible, given the, ra- given the risks that we face in our state. And we use a number of tools to do that. Uh, and, and we also make sure that claims, insurance claims, are fairly paid. Uh, and that's another really important part of, of what we do. We return millions of dollars to people after disasters, after normal disasters, you know, wildfire disasters or a, a plumbing disaster, um, you know, making sure that those claims are, fa- are paid fairly. So, you know, we, we you know, work with our brokers, work with our agents on those issues as well. So um, that's if, in a nutshell, that's what we do. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's important that everyone realizes that you're you're there always, but you're also there in the event something doesn't go exactly the way a consumer wants it to. And we'll yep. get, before you go, we'll get all of the contact numbers and emails and forms for people if they do have issues with questions, claims, whatever it might be. I know uh, Commissioner Laura has some helpful sites uh, on the webpage that people can go to to get more information and updated information. Right now, as uh, everyone knows, the the big the big ticket item, I guess, is is what State Farm is doing. Right, they have uh, non renewed about seventy two thousand policies, half individual homeowners policies, the other half roughly small commercial or maybe some duplexes, triplexes, things like that. And then on the tails of that, uh, AM Best, which is the organization that rates insurance companies' solvency worldwide, went and lowered them from an A rating to a B rating. So a real jolt to the industry. Can you talk, talk to us a little bit about what, what, did you see this coming? What, what do you think, uh, what, what's your feeling on this and what's the department doing to try and help, like you're saying, look out for consumers on this? 
uh, Carl, you said it right at the beginning there, that your role is about reducing misunderstandings. Uh, I think there's a lot of confusion. Um, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anger from consumers who we talk to all the time about what's happening in the market. And when we see the headlines about State Farm, um, it's important to put it in, in the context of what's happening, um, because I think State Farm is California's largest property insurance insurance company. Um, you know, they, they have somewhere around 20 plus percent of the homeowners marketplace. Um, that makes them very big. And so when they do an action like this, they, they, it, it, it affects a lot of people. Um, so they, what, they, what they announced was, you know, as you mentioned, right, non-renewing 30,000 residential policies. They're also pulling out of a commercial apartment market. Um, so that's another 42,000 or so policies. And, and when it, you know, we, I talked about our roles. What, a, another important role of the Department of Insurance is to be the insurance regulator and to hold, really hold insurance companies accountable for, for their words, for their, you know, their, for their contracts and honoring those. And, and their decision to non-renew policies, um, you know, less than a year after they paused writing all new policies in the state, that really raises questions for us as the regulator about the financial situation. Um, and, and those are questions that this company needs to answer. And so we are working together with State Farm's home state of Illinois, um, where they're based, um, to really get a full picture of, of the financial condition. Um, and, and even more importantly, what's their plan for improvement? Because you know, as the regulator, we need to be confident in their, that they have, a, they have a strategy moving forward, um, and their customers need to be confident of that strategy. Um, so that's really what's going on with State Farm. Um, Are you, there and, was some talk that um, you were going to be potentially in starting an inquiry into their financial status, because obviously now AM Best clearly thinks that there are some issues with their finances. I want to talk about what it is that you might be doing to try and look into their, their situation. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, let's talk about what the department's planning on doing specifically based on the action State Farm has taken with this group of non-renewals. We'll get it when we come right back. Has your heater or air conditioner busted? Appliance broken? Computer crashed? Then you need an ARW home warranty. Home system and appliance repairs and replacements can cause stress and cost you thousands of dollars per year. With an A-plus BBB rating and a top-rated home warranty company on Consumer Affairs and Trust Pilot, ARW Home provides superior service, featuring the industry's lowest service call fee. ARW Home has warranty plans that cover your kitchen and laundry appliances, heating and air conditioning systems, electrical and plumbing systems, and much more. Call 800-234-1483 to customize your plan. Plus, ARW has partnered with Azurian to protect your new and used tablets, laptops, TVs, and other home tech from accidental damage and wear and tear. All plans come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 800-234-1483 now for a free quote. That's 800-234-1483. Hello, hello, and we are back. Thank you. Right before the break, we were talking with Deputy Insurance Commissioner Michael Soller, and I would like to continue that conversation. We were talking right before the break about what specific actions the department was looking to take uh, with State Farm, given their stopping writing business, their non-renewals, and the recent rating um, lowering by AM Best for financial solvency. Uh, Carl, I mentioned we're working with State Farm's home state of Illinois, uh, we have that. That is how you know insurance is regulated state by state, and we coordinate with states. So, really, the in a big, big picture, we're looking at uh, you know our laws have requirements around solvency um, that that detail. Uh, companies have to maintain uh, surplus levels. They have to maintain adequate capital, um, and it's all meant to make sure that they can pay future claims in a disaster um, or in a, you know, in a normal, even in a normal year, insurance companies pay a lot of claims for house fires, um, plumbing, to, you know, normal, what we think of as normal plumbing disasters, right? Um, but the, the, so State Farm's sort of actions and what they've done flag for us as regulators that we need to take a closer look and they need to be reporting to us. And so that's what we're going to be doing 
with State Farm. And it's what actually important to... Th- yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, so what What would your recommendation be for people that are with State Farm? Should they be comfortable that their claims could be paid at this point? And what would your recommendation be for people that are being non-renewed in the market that's obviously very tight to try and get replacement coverage? That's a great question. I mean, because these solvency, people hear solvency and they, and that, again, they get worried. They think it's not going to be here. Cal- California has a very good record in companies staying solvent. I mean, we're very proud of that. Um, you know, and, and, and I think what State Farm is, is like an early warning system for them that has, has triggered. Um, and, and in terms of people with State Farm policies, just to be very clear, um, these don't all cancel at once. Um, in, in, you know, what they've said is starting the summer and over the next year, they'll be non-renewing some policy, these 30,000 policies. Um, in some areas, it's going to be a large percentage of their market, particularly in places where there is higher wildfire risk. So you can actually see the list of zip codes. Um, it's, it's, you know, they publicly filed with that. But I think more importantly, reach out to your agent and, and understand what's happening. You know, they, they should be able to give you some better information about, about, you know, are they going to be able to continue writing you a policy? And then start that process of talking to other agents, talk, you know, and, and the Department of Insurance has tools where you can actually go and you can find some, you know, other, other companies that may be writing in your area. Um, and of course, the big problem in our state is that there are parts of the state where there aren't insurance companies writing. And that's, that's really the top priority for us this year um, that we're working on. So then that goes way beyond State Farm. Sure. Well, we'll talk about that uh, also, the sustainable insurance strategy and, and what the commissioner is yeah. putting forward to try and get the carriers to start being comfortable and, and, and writing again. But I know that one of the options that people have, because the market is so tight, to try and get coverage is to go to the California Fair Plan, which has apparently is having its own growth pains right now as well. So can you give us a little bit of feedback? What is your general feeling? What is the department's feeling about fair plan, their ability to pay, their ability to process applications and claims potentially? Well, fair plan, you you and I both are very familiar with the fair plan, um, right? I like, you know, I like that smile. That's a, uh, yes, we are. <laughs> we are. And, and, but I think still many Californians aren't. I mean, and that's, it's, a, you know, it is, you know, maybe 3% of the overall residential market right now. And it's grown a lot since the wildfires of 2017 and 2018. It really saw a growth spike. Um, and that's continued um, through the, 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 the last year um, where insurance companies are limiting their policies. Um, you know, it, it really is meant to be the insurer of last resort. It is not, you know, a government run insurance company. Right. And that's an important thing to understand um, because it's still run by insurance companies. Uh, they ultimately are responsible. Um, but the Department of Insurance has some oversight. And what we are trying to do is really make sure that the fair plan is uh, su- successful financially, that they have the wherewithal to pay to pay their claims, almost like any other insurance company, and that they're providing the service that people need. I mean, it, it, just to give you an example, Carl, when Commissioner Lada came into office, you know, the fair plan had coverage levels for residential uh, properties that hadn't changed in 25 years. California had changed a lot. You know, I mean, property values grew. Um, So we doubled that coverage, went from 1.5 million to 3 million. Now, that's still not enough for some people. And when we I'm hear glad, from our, that was going to be my next thought, and we probably could easily go to five and and still have you know potential outliers. Exactly, but I mean, just to think about the fair plan, it really needs to modernize. It, there's things that it needs to do to to serve people better, and at the same time, it has to shrink. And so it's this con- it seems like maybe it's a contradiction, but we see it as part of the same overall strategy. We have to get people off the fair plan, back into resident, you know, normal competitive market. Um, and we need the fair plan to do better. Right. 
And do you think that at this point, with the growth that Fairplan is seeing, maybe you can explain, you're saying that it's run by insurance carriers and, and it's, it's, a, it's an interesting charter, the way Fairplan is put together, but can you explain why an insurance carrier, a private carrier, would be concerned about the fair plan paying losses. I understand how it works, but I, it's, if you could explain to, to people so they understand, well, why does an insurance company care if fair plan has losses? Why do they care if the fair plan is solvent or not? All right, let's go deep into California history. <laughs> deep into this is the this is the um, moment in the insurance hour where we where we roll back time and we look at the, the fair plan was established after. The, the, in, the, in the late 1960s, early 1970s, when you know, the problem of redlining, um, insurance companies not writing in urban areas um, you know, after civil unrest civil, you know, of the 1960s. But it also had a, a charge to write in brush areas wild, you know, where wildfires. You know, so, and the, the governor and the uh, legislature established it. And what they said was, if the fair plan is ever to become insolvent, if it's ever to face a disaster where it has to pay more uh, than, than it has on its, you know, its books or in reinsurance to cover it, um, it can assess its member companies. And the member companies are, are all of the insurance companies um, that, are, that are authorized to write in California, all the major names. And, and I'll tell you, this assessment hasn't happened um, in really since the North Ridge earthquake. But it's still driving factor in why insurance companies are limiting their policies in some ways because of the, the risk of an unknown amount of money that they may have to pay. They right. have to so, pay it in proportion to their market share in California. Right, which is one of the reasons why the carriers are potentially not writing because they don't want to increase their market share, which could potentially increase the amount that they would be responsible for in the event of a loss. I, yeah, I mean, un doubt, uncertainty isn't good for consumers. It's also not good for businesses. And so, right. you know, the, the, it is definitely a factor. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get to my favorite part. I want to dispel some conspiracy theories with you because I know that I can say it all day long. It doesn't matter. But if you say it, it's going to go a lot longer. So when we come back, we are going to dispel the biggest conspiracy theory that there is. We'll be back in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Greg. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the windowtothemagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello, and welcome back. We were talking about the California Fair Plan and why carriers have a, an interest in being sure that the Fair Plan is properly solvent because it is their pocketbook. But now the exciting part. The big conspiracy. I hear this, and I'm sure you probably do, Michael, far too often and more than we should, that there's this feeling that consumers think that all of the insurance companies have gotten together with the Department of Insurance and there's this conspiracy to make a phony um, issue that there's really uh, hazards and they can't write to just do nothing other than raise rates. Can you please speak to that so people understand the reality that's going on out there? Absolutely, Carl. Um, you know, I want to say no. I just want to say no. But I think it's important to start from a common set of facts about how insurance is regulated in California, really. Uh, and we use an analogy. You know, most people are familiar with a public utilities. And, and public utilities are required to cover everyone who is in their coverage area. 
unlike public utilities, insurance companies are free to write policies where they want. Uh, and, and that includes non-renew policies. So that's a, that's a first important fact under Proposition 103, which is the kind of guiding star of, of our insurance regulation. So voters 35 years ago passed Proposition 103. Back when we were kids, right? We were I, babies. I don't even know if we were around then. I wasn't, I wasn't voting. I didn't, <laughs> you know. So I didn't. Me neither. Okay. I like that. <laughs> Let's go with that. So, so they passed this, and and um, you know the other key thing to know about Proposition One Hundred and Three is that um, under Proposition One Hundred and Three, insurance companies are free to set their rates um, at a level appropriate to pay future claims, and we regulate that. We want to we we make sure, as I said, those are as low as possible, right? But I think uh, the language is something like the premiums cannot be excessive or insufficient to pay claims, which. Is spot on. Excessive. They can't be excessive. They can't be inadequate. That's right. Excessive or or inadequate. Right. And and the third is they can't be unfairly discriminatory, Um, which sounds like an oxymoron. We had somebody call us on that unfairly discriminatory, um, a woman up in Guerneville. And, you know, but the idea is that um, insurance companies do discriminate in their rates. I mean, they determine they set rates at different levels uh, driven by risk. So, so anyway, under Proposition 103, um, insurance companies have been increasing their rates legally with no benefit for consumers in increased availability of insurance because of that, you know, that is, that is sort of the, the limit of Proposition 103 that we're confronting. So everything we're doing, the uh, Commissioner Lada's sustainable insurance strategy is to solve that problem of insurance can write where they want and increase rates without a benefit of, of increasing availability. So that's the, the you know where we want it. We're working this year to remove people from the fair plan. I'm not sure this dispelled the the conspiracy, you know, but it's important to understand that we are, you know, there are some bounds to what we can do, and we're using every single tool possible to boost availability of insurance so that we can drive prices down. Right. And you and and again, the idea, the reason we're seeing the rates we are now in part is we've got this whiplash, right? Like you said, rate filings come in weekly because they're getting these teeny bits, right? And they're trying to play catch up at the same time. And the optics of it is horrible. So you you see where people are getting that that thinking, right? But they don't understand that there's a reason for it, that there's a reason that they're coming in little bite sizes versus in just what is adequate, right, to remain solvent. Well, and I want to be really clear about this. Um, You know, insurance, you can go to our website, insurance.ca.gov. We have a web page there about, it says, you know, learn more about the sustainable insurance strategy. We have a presentation. Commissioner Lada gave a a presentation last September. He's talked to the assembly, the Senate. He's given this to thousands of people in meetings, right? He's, you know, um, and you can see that seven of the top 12 insurance groups in the state have limited their writing. And right next to it, you can see they've gotten rate increases, right? And so this, in the past, you know, I think this, the, the idea was that this would sort of work out, you know, an insurance company might pause writing or limit, but there'd be other companies come in that, you know, all state paused writing in 2007 and stayed out of the market for about eight years, right? That was not seen as a crisis at the time, but I because think it's one company. Back, it seems like one company, but I think looking back, that was early, that was warning signs. I mean, we have decades long delayed action here um, that's built up, and then when you have a cri- when you have a crisis, the expansion of global catastrophes, the massive losses that don't just affect California but affect the whole world, um, the rising costs of rebuilding. That, Michael, you know what's interesting? What's, you said something that, that really resonated with me. You're saying that, that, that it's been as a warning sign as long as is, is eight, you know, a, a decade ago. And, and because of the current regulations that are in Prop 103, the, the carrier's ability to work with the DOI to, to adjust underwriting and rates is so limited, but which stretches out the timeline for everything. But the one thing that the carriers can do on a dime is 
stop writing. And that I think is exactly that. I mean, that's just, that's spot on. I mean, that to me is what resonates the most that that's how we got where we are. Because in, 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 instead of it being in a situation where the DOI and the industry can be working together and saying, okay, we're seeing challenges with this, we're seeing challenges with that, how can we work on it and keep everyone engaged because there's this these old laws that you and I didn't vote for that uh, are, are in place that are preventing really that dialogue from happening. And, and I think, I, I mean, you, you really just, it, it just clarified in my mind the why and the how we got exactly where we are right now. Yeah, and Carl, everyone has a responsibility for this and for fixing this. So the insurance companies have a responsibility, you know, for managing their their business effectively, um, for also supporting real risk reduction. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, because I think that is a real key. That's something that wasn't there a decade ago, um, was a, a clear, consistent approach to wildfire safety in particular. Well, for safety we and and reduction as well. I know there's the you know, laws are on the books right now, and carriers are submitting their their plans that they're required to for people to do X, Y, and Z things in order to you know lower their premium. One of the specifically I know is with the California Fair Plan, fourteen and a half percent you can get off for doing certain things to your home and certain things surrounding your home. So I think that that's that's definitely the right direction. And one of the things I'm always preaching, in essence, is that we're going to have to have a bit of a shift in our mentality that consumers have to take a little more responsibility to be able to do things to be able to lower their premiums. No, that's that's right, Carl. I, just, I mean, I think we've met with thousands of people, um, you know, across the Sierra and Southern California, San Bernardino Mountains, another key area, um, Malibu, Calabasas, right? And people who live in beautiful places understand there's a risk. Um, they understand, you know, they have a responsibility. I mean, we hear, you know, we again and again, we're talking with firefighters, you know, who wildland firefighters, right? We'll live in these, in these the spots. heroes. I'm doing, and they say exactly, they say, I'm doing everything to protect my house. I've, I've got my, my trees are all limbed up. You know, I've got my five foot, no, no burn zone, no, no ignition zone around my house. And insurance companies still aren't taking giving me any credit for that. So we've changed that. And so right. that's, you mentioned, right? This it behooves over the everybody. Next... And I always tell people, and you, be, you probably won't be surprised to hear this. If you ask the average person, what would you prefer, a covered claim or no claim? Oddly enough, they pick the covered claim. And I think that's, that's the mentality that we have to change because a claim means a loss. A loss is bad. That's not good for anybody. And, and, and that's, I think it's a general feeling and a general sentiment that we have to get people to sort of shift on. Let's take one more quick break. And then I want to just get your two cents on uh, Consumer Watchdog and, and uh, good old Harvey. We'll do that right after the break. We all love children, and many of us have an old car, truck, or van in the driveway. Find the Children has a great way for you to put your unwanted vehicle to good use. Keep listening. Every year, thousands of kids go missing. Trust me, it's a parent's worst nightmare. When a child goes missing, every moment counts, and you need all of the help you can get. Find the Children is a nonprofit organization dedicated to locating missing children and bringing them home safely. You can help support their mission by donating your car, truck, van, or SUV. A towing company will come and pick up your car for free, running or not, and the donation of your car is tax deductible. Your help is providing the funds they need to continue their services. Call now, donate your old vehicle to find the children and get free pickup. Here's the number. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. That's 800-403-6517. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. As you know, you can always reach us at 559-656-0317. Send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. Or if it's an emergency, you need somebody right now, right now, you can just dial pound 250 on your phone, use keyword insurance, and with a little bit of luck, clicking your heels together, you'll get someone on the phone right away that can help you. 
Uh, today, we are talking with Deputy Insurance Commissioner uh, Michael Zoller. And right before the break, we were talking about, well, everything. But I wanted to give you a chance to uh, get a few minutes in to talk about I'm making air quotes, consumer watchdog and uh, what your feeling is. Are they are they helping the industry in California? Are they helping the consumers in California? Where do you see them at this point uh, on that continuum? So uh, I mentioned Proposition 103, Carl. All right. And, and the, the, the predecessor to this organization, you know, uh, wrote Proposition 103, was put on the ballot you know, uh, and voters approved it in 1988. It established a system where the Department of Insurance, our department, does a thorough review of each and every rate filing that comes in, um, really to make sure, as we said before, people have the the best value and and we keep this marketplace working for consumers. Um, It also created a system of public, what's called public inter- intervention. So any member of the public could participate in a rate filing um, and be compensated for that, for that involvement, for making a, a substantial contribution that, that helps consumers, right? So uh, side by side, side by side with our department. In practice though, there's one group that's materially benefited from that over, over the years. Um, and that's consumer watchdog. And the problem is that the rules that were set up um, aren't benefiting California consumers right now. I mean, over time, we've saved a lot of money for people, but that's not in this moment, you know, uh, when pe- people can't get insurance, um, you know, that, that, you know, for, that's driving the, the problems in the market. Um, so we're really up against those limits, um, you know, and, and we need everyone to be helping and seeing the same set of facts. And it feels often like Consumer Watchdog is not looking at the same set of facts, the same things that consumers are experiencing. Um, you know, they want to talk about, you know, again, issues that aren't benefiting Californians right now. What's always been a bit of a puzzle to me is Proposition 103 created the insurance commissioner as an elected position. And can I, California voters elected a commissioner twice as it turns out that right now but consumer watchdog seems like they still want that that's if they're not happy with what the insurance office is doing they almost want to act as their own insurance office right to oversee the insurance department which doesn't make sense well and we're going through a it's a public input public review transparency these are actually bedrock principles in California law and, you know, in insurance law. And we are going through a process right now of seeking public input on the changes that we've proposed, right? They're one voice, you know, they're, we need to hear from everybody, right? We need to hear from HOAs, um, you know, com- community associations, right, that are having trouble getting insurance, from firefighters, um, you know, from, from builders. I mean, there's a whole realtors, right? There's a whole group of people. So there's, there's, and actually, if we can, you can talk a little bit about just what that process is, because we have a meeting here coming up on April 23rd on one of the regulations we proposed. Definitely. And I, and I, I've, I've been to those open hearings and everybody, literally everybody gets a chance to talk. Everybody becomes part of the public record. And I'm sure that's, that's the point, right? It's full transparency. There's no closed door meetings going on between anybody. So I can I can personally attest to that, having attended them, that if you have not, we'll actually put a link to that uh, hearing that's coming up. It's going to be about uh, catastrophe modeling. That's the second phase of the sustainable insurance strategy that's been rolling out. And, and since we're on that, let, let's get to it. So the big question is, what now? What's being done? What's the department doing to try and get the industry jump started again? And it's the sustainable insurance strategy. So, you know, in your own words, why don't you give us give us your your rundown of that? Absolutely. So Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara last year proposed the sustainable insurance strategy. It's really a comprehensive plan, as you said, to jumpstart the writing of insurance in all parts of the state and to take people off the fair plan. So the goal is a competitive market for you, no matter where you live, if you're in the Sierra um, or in the in the WUI, you know, the, the wildland urban interface. Right. Um, so it has four major parts. 
I'm going to run through them real fast. There's a lot more information on our website. Um, the first part addresses what I talked about is rate filing review. You know, so it's really making sure that we are getting, the department is getting the complete information um, up front to do a thorough review of a rate filing. And that's communicated back to the insurance company. So we don't, you know, we, we are actually able to move through these, um, you know, when things are changing quickly, being able to move quickly. As, and as government, that's really important to be able to be responsive. Um, the second part you mentioned um, is catastrophe modeling. We are the only state that, that, that requires insurance companies to use past experience to look at future losses. And just to put this in context, you have, when you have massive wildfires like 2017 and 2018, Insurance companies are taking a portion of that and they're putting it into their rate filing. Again, legally under Proposition 103. And that's contributing to some of the rate spikes and the, and the premium hikes that people are experiencing. Catastrophe modeling would allow us to look to, to use multiple inputs. It would also be required to include wildfire safety. So where a, a fire department has done a, a you know, a, a, a a fire break where the state has invested billions of dollars in wildfire grants to communities and where people are now following safer from wildfires, our 10 point list, right, are doing this work. That all now has to be included and recognized. So that's a huge change. And that's the regulation that's, that's introduced. April 23rd, we'll have a, a public uh, meeting on it. Um, and the last two elements address reinsurance costs, which is, again, how, how, a big part of how insurance companies manage climate risks. Um, and the final part involves the FAIR plan itself, where we started fixing, you know, fixing the FAIR plan and giving people a, a roadmap to get off the FAIR plan. So that's kind of the, in a nutshell, it's, it, it's complex, um, but it's all being done through our regulatory power with public input. Um, over this year. And we'll have, you know, our goal is by December 2024 to have this implemented so that we're moving forward. So the, the begging question, of course, and everyone asks this is when, right? When, when is it going to change? When are we going to be able to shop in an open market versus, like I say, hunt and grab whatever is possibly available right now? If, if the guidelines are supposed to be, are you saying they're all going to be introduced by year end? Will some actually be in place for carriers to start submitting their guidelines and underwriting based on then? What, what is the timeline that you're comfortable giving us? The timeline is implemented in place by December 2024, all of these elements. And so insurance implemented meaning then insurance companies are coming in with their rate filings and they're detailing. Here's how we're going to take, you know, we're taking policies off the fair plan and then we'll, we'll be monitoring that. I mean, that's an important thing. You know, we will continue to, to have that oversight of the individual companies, you know, and use our enforcement tools to make sure they're, you know, holding up their side of the deal and making, and which is, making insurance available again for everybody. Um, you know, there's, I mean, Carl, you know, there's probably markets where, where people, there are markets where things are working, right? I mean, you know that as right. brokers, agents know that. Right? Sure. And that's not the, where we read the headlines. But we want those, that experience for everybody. We want everybody to be able to get 10 bids for a company, not zero. Right. And that's what's happening. Well, that's what everybody wants. And, and I, you know what, we're, everyone's on this, everything you've said just reeks of logic and just makes sense. It's, it's frustrating, you know, being the boots on the ground like I am because getting constantly bombarded with, like I said, the conspiracy theories and the, oh, what about, and the, oh my goodness, and what are they doing, what's happening? But it's so refreshing to be able to actually hear it, especially from the source, you know, from the department. And to know, you know, I go to bed tonight, I can say to myself, Okay, this is a really bad situation, but they're dealing with it now. You know, it's, it, yeah, I wish they would have dealt with it a year or two ago, but, you know, they're, they're, it is what it is. But I know that they're on it now. They're doing what they can do to get things on the right track now. I know you have to go, but I want to give you a chance. Is there anything else that you want to hit on um, before you take off to your next spot? Carl, 
uh, what you said is so spot on. You know, agents and brokers are critical to this um, conversation, and and because you're actually out there representing your customers, representing consumers. So there's, I think, there's some common, a lot of common ground with our agents and brokers and the Department of Insurance. You know, so we we're, you know, we don't want to be pointing fingers. We actually want to be coming up with solutions. That's what we're working on. And this, you know, I want to be really clear with people. I mean, there's a there's a lot of people who are in crisis, and there and 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 it's it is this is a tough time. I don't think we've seen this kind of tough marketplace conditions probably since the Northridge earthquake um, of 1994, right? And I, I, you know, I wasn't in this business then. I'm not going to ask you. It was not um, fun. I was, and it was definitely, it was difficult. But for some, for some reason, it was different because there was one specific issue, which was the law requiring earthquake insurance with homeowners. Yep. Carriers were offering endorsements for an earthquake for 80 bucks. And all of a sudden they went, oh, wait, that doesn't work. And, and the CEA was born a few years later. And then yep. everything just jumped right back in. I think this will probably be a slower process because it's a more significant overhaul of how everything is underwritten. That's a really good point. You know, there was a sort of, uh, you know, with the CEA coming in, it was able to turn that, um, the spigot back on. And, you know, because we're, we're sudden, we, I forget the number, but, you know, the, you know, 90% or so of the market, I think, had stopped writing property insurance, right? We're not at quite that level uh, as a whole, but in areas where there's wildfire risk, we are at that level. Right. So it's a more complex problem. It's it's, you know, affecting some parts of the state more than others. It's even affecting house by house, block by block. And that's, right. you know, th- which makes it a tougher problem. And so we are this year really working, looking at, at data about where distressed areas are. Areas are. I think that's going to be very interesting to you and to agents when we come out with that. You know, I know we'll we'll hear a lot from people um, about you know, uh, what can I do? And this really gets to the heart of, you know, what can I do as a, as a homeowner? What can I do as a local government? Right. And what can agents do? So we all have, like I said, we all have a part to play, but I think we are, the department of insurance is moving as quickly as possible. This is top priority. Every day we're in meetings on different parts of this. So we're, we're going to, you know, be updating people through the year, insurance.ca.gov. You can come to us. And just as a last word, call us. If you're having any kind of insurance problem, right? As an agent, um, if, you're, if your clients are having problems, you know, they're getting, uh, uh, you know, the insurance company saying, oh, I can't write you because your roof uh, is not new or, you know, and you know it is, come to us. Right, 800-927-4357. That's what we're set up to do. Michael, I can't thank you enough. And and to your point, it's good to know that you're you're that safety net for consumers. And what I'm always trying to do is we always try and educate brokers as well. You know, it's it's so hard for us right now, right? We're shot down so many times a day trying to get coverage that some agents have sort of thrown their hands up, but that this is actually the time that we shine because the agents that will get involved when their client does call and say, I got a, a non-renewal because of X, Y, and Z. That's it's inaccurate, and the agent will say, "Okay, this is why I'm here," and they'll step up and they'll do those things. But you're right; it's a it's it's a matter of different lines of defense, right? And it starts with the consumer and the broker, and if that still can't get handled, then they've got the safety net to go to you for help. That's exactly right. Service matters. Service to people matters, whether it's our department or you as agents. Yeah. Michael, thank you so much. I, I know you have to go. I appreciate you staying a few extra minutes with us, and I'd love to have you back to, to give us updates as time goes by. I'm completely confident that we will get where we need to go because I'm being born and raised in California. I can tell you this is the best place in the world. You know, And people should also understand, and I'm sure you know this, 
We are not the only state that's having this problem. There are it, literally every state right now has some issue of capacity and rate and and catastrophe. There's bills now that are actually in the federal government to actually work on part of this. Adam Schiff has a bill that was introduced. I'm sure we'll be hearing a little bit more about that as time goes by. So there's a lot of moving parts. But for one, it's, it's just very good to know, like I said, straight from the horse's mouth, that California Department of Insurance gets it. And they understand that everyone plays a part from the consumers to the brokers to the carriers to to themselves uh, to be involved and to try and make this system work again. Carl, thanks for having me. I'll come back and give a progress report. Great. Thank you so much. We'll take a quick break now. In today's uncertain times, navigating the California insurance marketplace can feel like a journey through uncharted waters. That's where Sussman Insurance Agency steps in, guiding you with the wisdom of experience and the care of family. We at Sussman Insurance Agency understand the complexities of finding the right coverage in these challenging times. With decades of expertise and a heritage spanning two generations, we're more than just insurance agents. We are your trusted advisors, your navigators in the sea of insurance options. Treating our clients like family isn't just a phrase, it's our commitment. We listen, we understand, and we provide solutions tailored to your unique needs. Why? Because to us, you're a part of the Sussman family. Family. Don't let the tides of uncertainty sway you. Anchor your trust in Sussman Insurance Agency. Call us today at 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Have specific questions? Drop us an email at sales at sussmaninsurance.com. At Sussman Insurance Agency, we're not just in the business of policies. We're in the business of peace of mind. Sussman Insurance Agency, navigating your insurance life together. Hello, hello, welcome back. Carl Sussman here with Insurance Hour. We had Michael Soller on from the Department of Insurance, and we were lucky to keep him a couple extra minutes. He was trying to bow out earlier, but he was a real sport and he stayed a little bit longer. We covered a lot of information. We talked about everything from the insurance availability crisis to what's being done to consumer watchdog, to prices, to how to reach the department, to what they're doing, just about everything. If you missed any of the show, remember you can catch it on YouTube, you can catch it as a podcast, and it's it's pretty much everywhere. Anywhere you would potentially get video or audio, search for Insurance Hour and you'll be able to find that. You can also reach out to me directly at 559 656 0317, or you can send in questions to questions at insurancehour.com. And of course, you can dial pound 250 on your phone, use keyword insurance, and you will get through to an agent. Now, as we're wrapping up today, I want to reflect on everything that we heard. Now, I know that some people are going to be listening to it and they're going to think, yeah, 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 yeah. But understand that this is a very complicated and complex situation that we're in right now. And it didn't happen overnight. All of a sudden, it became front page news. But people like myself that have been in the industry for a number of years, we've been sounding that alarm bell about what's going on for probably about three years, maybe even a little bit longer, because we were seeing what was happening. We were hearing from the insurance industry and the experts and the actuaries, and we were seeing what was starting to happen. And we were slowly seeing carriers being in a position where they could not afford the exposure they had. And because of some of this antiquated legislation that's on the books, they were unable to work with the Department of Insurance to try and get the proper rate they needed to be able to stay solvent. Michael made a good point that we had the fewest numbers of carriers become insolvent in California. For example, Florida, I believe in 2023, I had eight or nine carriers go insolvent. But at the same time, what does that mean? Do you want to be with a carrier that is offering lots of coverage but can't pay the claims? Or do you want to be with, or do you want to have that carrier leave or, or already go insolvent? We need to get back to a position where all carriers are competing for business again. Keep in mind that insurance carriers make money by writing insurance. So the fact that they're not writing policies now, as Michael said, in some areas, there is not a single policy to offer. My experience, and anecdotally, I can tell you that it is it is a 99% shutdown in practically every area, or the carriers that are offering coverage are carriers that you may not have heard of before. They might be relatively small, or they may literally be a B-rated or less financially uh, stability-wise company. 
that's not where we need to be. That's not where we want to be in California. We need to be in a position where we have the best options, the best opportunities to get the right coverage for everybody and for each homeowner. And the way that's going to happen is by working together to mitigate potential losses. And that has to do with doing things that will prevent losses from happening. We have to have the Department of Insurance continue to work with the industry at large to try and find ways to be able to allow them to properly on a more granular level insure properties based on their specific rate characteristic. Notice that State Farm gave a list of zip codes they were non-renewing. Zip codes are large. Now, you can't tell me that every risk in that zip code that they selected is a bad risk or a high fire risk. No, but because of the way regulations are right now, they're not able to pick and choose. They're not able to say, well, this risk has a fire resistive roof we can keep this one. This one doesn't. This house has trees hanging on the top of it and bushes all over the place and it backs up to a hill. That one's going to be too high of an exposure for us right now, or we have to charge a higher premium just for that house right now. And these are things that the sustainable insurance strategy is going to allow insurers to do. It's going to allow them to be very specific, very granular, very individual on what they charge for the exact risk. It's actually called underwriting. They can actually look at more characteristics to offer discounts, more characteristics to offer suggestions on what you can do if you don't qualify for their particular product. Imagine going to get a proposal for insurance and being told you don't qualify. However, if you do X, Y, and Z, you will qualify. And then as a consumer, you can say, oh, I'm going to make the financial decision to either change my roof, clear the brush, whatever the things might be that need to be done to make your risk more acceptable to a larger group of insurance companies. That's good. That's a win-win for everybody. I mean, that's, that's, that's where we need to go. And fortunately, the sustainable insurance strategy, as it's outlined right now, is going to give more tools and more options for the industry in general to be able to properly underwrite, right? Which means pick and choose based on risk and at the same time price based on what they're picking and choosing in a way that's competitive, fair, and non-discriminatory. That's not something that anybody would say they don't want. So keep in mind when you're hearing things on the news, when you're hearing certain groups that are yapping about the big conspiracy that the insurance carriers are working with the department to just raise rates, it's really not a crisis, it's really not a problem. Don't listen to that nonsense. Please don't listen to that nonsense. It doesn't help anybody. And I think Michael was very good about, yeah, he's, he's clearly a very good public speaker because he, he, I could see it in his eyes what he wanted to say and he kept it very politically correct and didn't make any enemies. And we know the truth, right? We know what's happening. If you're reading the news, if you're watching, if you're attending these hearings like I am, you, you know what that particular group is about. So with that, I will finish up today's show. I thank everybody for being here. I really appreciate you spending the time and listening and learning. If you found this information interesting, share it with somebody else because all of this affects all of us in California. And we need to be sure that as Californians, we are the first to find solutions to these complex worldwide issues that are affecting the insurance industry. And we absolutely can, and we absolutely will do that. So share this with someone if they live in California, if they're interested in knowing what it is that we're dealing with. And remember, if you missed any part of the show, you can catch it on a podcast, you can catch it on YouTube, you can catch it pretty much anywhere, iHeartRadio, you name it, it's out there. I'm Carl Sussman, and thank you so much for being here with me today. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559-656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians, one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.